financial problems, elder law, criminal law, tax problems, business matters, divorce, personal injury, bankruptcy, your life, your reality. Life is complicated. There is the law and there is reality. Welcome to Law and Reality, sponsored by Thav Gross. Now here's your host, Ken Gross. Welcome to this segment of Law and Reality. Today's topic is disabled and going broke fast. Brian Small, good morning. Good morning, Ken. A pleasure to be here. And it, and it going broke fast is, is the name of the game these days. Money is going away fast. Unfortunately. Jeffrey Kirshner, good to see you. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, I got to stretch. It's been a while since I've been on. I'm a little kind of out of sorts, but I'm ready, coach. Let's it play. Is good, it is good to have you back. And we're talking about disability today. So you're, uh, you're, you're Johnny on the spot. In fact, what I wanted to do before we get into a case study Let's do kind of a recap on workers' compensation, more, more particularly Social Security and disability. You know, it's like you hear about it all the time. There's a million TV commercials about it, if nothing else. But what makes someone eligible for Social Security disability? Eligible for Social Security, very simple. First of all, you have to have an injury or combination of injuries or conditions that render you unable to work for 12 months or longer, or when you apply to Social Security, if it has not been quite 12 months yet, that the entire duration of your disability has to be 12 months or longer. Now, that's for the disability portion of it. Then there's two different benefits, SSD, Social Security Disability, and SSI, Supplemental Security Income. Not to bore the two, SSD is the better benefit paid on what you've paid into the system. To qualify for that, though, you had to have worked and at least five of the past 10 years from the date you got disabled, or they break a year into quarters, 20 of the past 40 quarters. So there's an earnings requirement to be eligible. For SSI, Supplemental Security Income, which is need-based, it's a federal program, if you are an individual single, you can only have $2,000 worth of assets, excluding a place to live and a vehicle. If you are married, that number goes up to 3000 but they look at joint assets of you and your spouse and anyone else that may be in your household. Uh, two, two questions on that. One is, what about the guy who's worked all of his life under the table for cash? He always That's wants cash. He's not paying any. He, he doesn't declare his income. He's not filing tax returns. That's a tremendous problem. He would not be eligible for Social Security disability, even though he should get it. And he comes to me and said, look, I've worked my adult life. I've worked since I've been 17 years old. Unfortunately, what Social Security goes by in terms of figuring out whether or not you're eligible from a um, credit standpoint, earned credits per quarter, is what you have declared to the federal government. And if so you don't he's got zero. Income, correct. And that's the problem. And then more likely than not, if he's been making cash and making decent money, he probably has a decent amount of money, at least in a bank account. And more likely than not, he exceeds that $2,000 or $3,000 threshold. So and then he's out of luck for both disability benefits. There's another thing here that people don't realize it is that same guy is not going to get any Social Security income either. Right. That's a problem, too. No once it's retirement no, age. He's, he's, the guy, he's the guy that has to work up until the day he dies or he's got to put cash away in the bank and have saved up enough to take care of himself. And he'll still qualify for Medicare because at age 65, everybody qualifies for Medicare. But beyond that, he's stuck. I see, you, you must see it too, but I see so many people that, for, first of all, as a lawyer and doing tax work, we always tell people you have to declare your income and file your tax returns. But beyond that, this notion of trying to avoid paying taxes and just getting cash, those people, I don't see any of them having money saved for retirement, and they get to be 65, 70, all they can do is work for cash again because, or, or work because they have no money. And people need to really realize if you become disabled, you get no help on SSD, 
and you get no uh, retirement money. And, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, the difference between Social Security disability and SSI is a boatload of difference in money. SSI is kind of a pittance, isn't it? Right. SSI pays anywhere 300, a maximum of $700, but you're talking the average is five, $550 per month whereby with regard to social security disability, um, the average is much higher. It's in the 1500, 600 for the average with a cap at close to $3,100. Now, obviously that's for the higher net worth earners, but still you can make a lot more money on social security disability benefits than SSI. Um, so it's really a mistake. And one other thing is the people that typically are working for cash are typically people not making as much money and more likely than not, they're not going to have much savings. So they are only going to be able to depend on SSI, even though they've worked 20, 30, 40 years, they've made a tremendous mistake uh, and a disservice to themselves and their family. No question. And just to throw in a tidbit, even if you had the person working for cash and not reporting his income, that person can't go put the money. If that person puts the money in a, in a bank account and starts earning interest on it and all of a sudden is accumulating all this interest and, and there's a 1099 being issued to the government and he's never filed a tax return, that's a, that, that's a badge of tax fraud in a tax investigation waiting to happen, too. So when people make when people are under the radar and they're when they're not declaring their income they're violating the law they get no social security they get no social security disability and they can't earn interest on the money they're saving because they have to basically keep it in a shoebox because they're evading their income tax responsibility it is the wrong play that's the only thing i want to say it's not smart you're better off if you're not earning high income you're not paying that great of an income tax anyway but the benefit of most of the benefit of what you are paying, you get back in Social Security income down the road and you're going to need that money. So my message to everybody is don't do that. And if you are doing it, you can stop. You don't have to continue doing that. It's just a bad play all, away, all along. All right, we're going to do a case study. Our clients are Barry and Sarah. Barry is a self-employed painter. Sarah's a nurse. And when we come back from the break, we're going to tell you what happens. COVID-19 presents a fight for our personal and business financial survival. You have to make choices. Cash is critical. Do you tap your retirement, home equity line, or run up the credit cards? You need the right plan to avoid being wiped out. And you need it now. You can't rely on the government or banks. Call us. We're the experts in financial crisis. We are here for you and your business in the Great Recession, and we're here for you now. We'll create a plan and get through this together. Thavgos will solve your problem. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Thav Gross specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. A lifetime of hard work. If you don't have the right plan in place, you can lose your home, your savings, and more. And you didn't come this far to lose everything. Samasco Law wants you to know that laws are changing. Today, the average cost of nursing home care is $85,000 a year. With proper planning, we can help protect your life savings and get you the Medicaid and nursing home benefits you deserve. How much can you afford to lose? Call Samasco Law today. You can't work. You have to deal with pain and stress. Worse yet, our system for applying for disability benefits seeks to deny you the benefits you're entitled. 
Jeff Kirshner is an expert in obtaining disability and workers' compensation benefits for his clients. You need to call Jeff before you apply or after you're denied to get the benefits you deserve. 888-235-HELP. 888-235-HELP. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. Okay, we're back. All right, so Barry and Sarah. Barry's self-employed. He's a painter. Sarah's a nurse. They got two kids in college. Income. Barry makes $90,000 a year. Sarah makes sixty. dollars Between the two of them, they got $150,000 a year of income. They have a house. Fair market value, $300,000. Mortgage, two and a quarter. $75,000 of equity. Sarah's got $85,000 in her 401k. Barry's got $80,000 in an IRA. Everything good so far. Now they're not so good. They've got $100,000 of credit card debt. That's costing him $2,500 a month in payments. Barry, who's self-employed, is behind on his taxes. He owes $15,000 from 2018, and he owes $17,500 from 2019. Here's what their budget looks like. Their net income after tax is around $8,750 a month. Mortgage, $1,950. Credit cards, the $2,500 we talked about couple car payments, utilities, gas, insurance, cell and cable, the college expense for the kids at $1,500 a month, $1,000 for food, entertainment. Their total expenses are running $9,400 a month. They're actually $650 negative. And they're really more negative than just that because if Barry was paying his taxes, there would be less money coming into the household on top of Correct. All right, little drum roll as to what happens. Barry's the painter, remember? He falls off the ladder while painting. Very serious injury. That's the bad. That's the really bad part. Off the wagon. Right. Now, where is he left? Now, let's look at their budget. The expenses, I've just moved over. They're all the same, but their monthly income goes down from eighty-seven fifty net to four thousand dollars. Actually, the and if there's a significant change in addition, they no longer have the money to pay for the college expense that's been replaced uh, in, in the future with with the fact that their uncle Sam is uh, now coming after them. Yeah, in, in fact, actually, that was an error on my first budget. That I had I didn't have the fifteen hundred as being didn't mean for that to be college that was going to be 1500 for irs because he's because he's being he's on a payment plan all right so first things first jeff take us through the disability process he's fallen off the ladder he's in the hospital the doctors are saying to him you're never going to paint again and we're not sure whether you're going to be able to walk any better than with a cane is he in a mode where he can get disability ss D. Too early to tell. So, he has the injury now, but it's time to at least start contemplating. Because the injury is acute, it just happened, we don't know what his prognosis is going to be. We don't know how long it's going to be before he can go back, may not be able to paint, maybe do something else. We know he's got a serious problem. As it relates to Social Security, we talk about it. 
we we gear him up in terms of what he should look for, what he should be t discussing with his doctors. We would follow up on the case and periodically monitor it. And if he is in that same condition or very similar in the next, say, five to six months, then we would go ahead and we would file the initial application because it's been six months. It hasn't been a year. But like I said before, if it's if the anticipated duration of the disability is 12 months or longer, they will possibly approve them. It's difficult, but that's when you should start the process then, because at least after five or six months, then it's palatable so, for Social so, Security. So, so, for so, let, so let's say I, I changed the facts a little bit and he's fallen off the ladder and he severed his spine and the doctor says is, is saying to him, you're not going to walk again. At that point, is he pretty much for sure going to be eligible for Social Security disability? Yes, but I, th I think that's a little bit easier when you apply. R remember, again, if it's less than 12 months when you apply, the anticipated duration of disability has to be 12 months or longer. In a scenario like that, where he's got this very poor prognosis, where he's got permanent paralysis, yes, he might be able to, to get it much sooner. Can I, can I, let me ask a question here. So change the facts a little bit again, because he the falling off the ladder, this time he lands on his head and he's concussed and he has recurring, he has brain swelling, he has recurring headaches that are blinding him, you know, so to speak, the blinding headache. He can't Migrant work headaches, again. right. Yeah. Is that something that you can also get Social Security disability for? Absolutely. Absolutely. All the time. I get benefits all the time. For people who just have migraine headaches, may not have anything else, but just have migraine headaches. But if those things are well documented, uh, certainly you can get benefits just for that disability alone, or in combination with the medications that you take, if they okay. cause but, you adverse effects. But, but question. All right, so how long is the process going to be from, let's assume he's going to meet the 12-month rule and he's disabled, from now until the time he goes through this process, how long before he starts see, he sees any money on a disability claim? Because he's got a serious income problem right now. They only have $4,000 a month coming in. Certainly, so let's go through it. So you file your initial application. They assess that. That may take three to four months to assess. If you're approved, you could get benefits soon after that. Statistically speaking, they probably will deny it. He's got, then got to go to what's called the reconsideration phase, which is this intermediary phase that rarely do people get approved once in a while, but the high likelihood is not great. That phase is another two to four months. Then you request a hearing. If you're going to that phase, it's taking about 10 months to get a hearing. So, so what's, you're talking what's about- the, What's the total? You're talking about maybe 18 months from start to finish. Could be sooner if you get approved sooner on in the process so when you get in 18 months when you get approved do you get 18 months benefit or you get six months benefit because you don't get for the first 12 months no you don't get for the you, you if they find you to be disabled from that date of that fall there's a five month elimination period the x says you're entitled to benefit so you get, thir thir so you get 13 months, months correct all right we're going to take a break and come back brian jeff you got to figure out how is he going to survive and what is he going to do for him and Sarah going forward. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. I love you too. Bye-bye. That was Jerry. Emma just said her first word. Oh. Jerry says hello and they'll be over soon. Who's Jerry? Is he a friend of yours? No. This is Jerry, our Jerry, and this is his wife, 
and their little girl? Time for announcements. I want to remind our viewers to listen to us for One Reality Live on the Praise Network, Tuesdays, 10 o'clock a.m. and Saturdays, 7 o'clock a.m. And then on KISS 105.9, Sundays, 7.30 a.m. every week. One Reality is happy to announce a free webinar. Stay in your home, attend our webinar via the Internet. You can watch it at the time of your choice and at your convenience. Just go to thavghost.com or onereality.com on the homepage Click webinar and you'll be taken right to the webinar and you'll have Brian, myself and Jeff Linden presenting to you. We're going to talk about how to eliminate your debt and get a fresh start and live debt free for 2021. Remember, to be free, you must be debt free. We'll address all the methods and that we use to preserve future income, get rid of the debt so that you can start saving money in the bank rather than giving your money to the bank. There'll be a special segment on small businesses facing debt and closure issues, learning your best options of when to use bankruptcy and when not to file bankruptcy. Attendees get a free copy of my book, Dump Your Debt. You can always come in to Thav Gross for a free consult. We're doing teleconferences, phone conferences, as well as proper social distancing for in-office meetings. Whichever you prefer, we can accommodate. You want to call 888-235-HELP or go online to sign up. Debt issues, tax issues, estate planning issues, business issues, elder law issues with Pat, disability issues with Jeffrey Kirshner, criminal law issues with Scott Weinberg. Just reach out to us. We're happy to help you. When, when you come in and you get a free consult, it's not a meet and greet. It's an, an analysis of your problem with a specific developed plan as to the best and optimal solution to that problem. So you know what your options are and you know how to implement a plan to resolve the problem. Also, take a look at the free reports that are online. Resolving Tax Problems, The Real Solution by myself and Jeff Linden, How to Save Your Home from Foreclosure, Business Formations, Loans and Grants for Small Businesses in Detroit and Michigan, and also the Retiree's Guide from Social Secu for Social Security from Pat Samasco. I want to thank our sponsors, Thav Gross, Samasco Law, Kirshner Law. Now back to the show. COVID-19 presents a fight for our personal and business financial survival. You have to make choices. Cash is critical. Do you tap your retirement, home equity line, or run up the credit cards? You need the right plan to avoid being wiped out. And you need it now. You can't rely on the government or banks. Call us. We're the experts in financial crisis. We are here for you and your business in the Great Recession, and we're here for you now. We'll create a plan and get through this together. Thavgross will solve your problem. All right, so we're back. So, Brian, I got Barry. He's in the hospital. Jeff's taking care of working on his disability claim. Sarah's panicked. She's a nurse, but she's got all this going on at home. She's got the credit card bills. She's got no income coming in from Barry. You know, he was a painter. At the moment he fell off the, the ladder, income stopped. There's no, nobody to pay him. So what do we do? Jeff's saying it's going to be 16 months or so before we get a disability check. What do we do with the bills, so forth? Do we just take so, out all the money from the IRA and the 401k? No, absolutely not. Pay the not. credit cards? First of all, we're never going to pay the credit cards. What's going to happen is, is that we're going to need to sit down with Sarah and then eventually sit down with her and her husband. And we're going to do, we're going to give her some structured advice on what to pay and what not to pay, and how to stretch every dollar that's coming into the household as far as we can, with the ultimate goal of filing a bankruptcy to eliminate the underlying debt, if it's possible. Now, all right. So the talk, talk to me the, about the credit cards and the tax debt. So first of all, the issues are are numerous because they have. A certain amount of equity in their house. They have seventy-five thousand dollars worth of equity in their home. So a bankruptcy, if they have no joint debt, I can do the bankruptcy all day long. For and if it's all in Barry's name, I can do it again all day long. The problem is, is that we start to worry about how much equity they're going to have in the house at the time they need a bankruptcy. Should they file it today or should they file it just before they get their Social Security disability? Because the longer they wait the more we can get rid of tax debt, which 
which is dischargeable, income tax debt is dischargeable if it's at least three years old and has been filed for at least two years. So in this case, if their tax debt is from 2018, it isn't dischargeable in bankruptcy until 2022. If it was from 2017, it would be dischargeable April 17th or 16th of this year because of the way right, taxes so, fall. So let's assume that the tax debt instead of 18 and 19 is 16 and 17 and it is dischargeable. Then I can wipe it out when I file the bankruptcy. The question is, is should we be filing the bankruptcy immediately? Should we be kind of using those credit cards to live off of and, and manipulate uh, the situation so that until, we don't spend our IRA? Until they're tapped out. Yeah. So when I don't, you file the bankruptcy, do you keep the IRAs in the... Uh, yeah, you keep your IRA, you keep your 401k, nobody touches them. Even if you're discharging the tax debt? Even if you're discharging the tax debt, unless the IRS has a tax lien. All right, so here's my big question. Do we file the bankruptcy before Jeff gets that disability check or after? So that disability check, which would be like 12 months, 16 months of retroactive pay, as long as you file the bankruptcy before you have received the money, because you can protect your right to receive the payment. If you've received it, I can't protect it. So we have to file the bankruptcy before you get the money from the government. All right, let me see if I'm absorbing this correctly with our changed facts. They do not, Sarah stops paying, as soon, as soon as the credit cards are tapped out, she stops paying them, she pays nothing on the credit cards. If they file suits or they come after her, we deal with it. We wait, as soon as we can discharge both sets of taxes, we then file the bankruptcy, assuming there's a lack of, assuming the house is still protected. And then we've discharged the taxes, we've discharged the credit card debt, we then get the money from the disability, so now we got a chunk of money in cash in the bank, and our budget now turns positive because we've gotten rid of that $2,500 credit card expense, the $1,500 uh, expense on the IRS tax payments, and we really only need one car rather than two because Barry can't drive. 100% correct. So... How do they protect, where do they stand on the house? So there's exemptions, protections, and depending on whether you take the federal exemptions or the state exemptions, depends on how much you can protect. A person over 60, over 65 can protect a larger amount of money, close They're to $60,000 equity. How much under 65 can they protect? So a couple, if they have joint debt, can protect $50,000 equity in their home federally. They can only protect Forty thousand dollars under the state exemptions, but there's more available if you're over sixty-five. All right. So if I only had fifty thousand, if I said sixty thousand of equity, and they filed the case, you might have to pay the trustee some money to keep the house. Yes, you might, but, but for, you still so get we're going to get that money from Jeff. We're going to get that money from the disability, or we can get it from the four hundred one k. The bottom line is we need to merge both together in order to solve the problem, and it's a solvable solution. They go from negative to positive, even with Jeff not being able to work. They still have a tough road ahead of them, but it won't be a financial problem. Have a great week. We'll be back next week with Law & Reality. Thanks for tuning in.